Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings, to the We Are Change News Show. And in this video, we are going to be discussing how currently the left is shooting itself in the foot. Gee, what a surprise there, over the latest Kavanaugh allegations, and how currently the right-wingers are trying to push us in a perpetual warpath between Russia and China. Yeah, 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 that's actually happening and escalating, and this video is specifically dedicated to people like myself and the over 100 million Americans who don't vote and are looking at this and being like, yeah, this is dumb. Now, before we start, just wanted to sincerely to thank everyone who supports us on patreon.com forward slash we are change, where through your monthly donations, we're able to be a free and independent media organization and not corporate government shills. Sincerely, thank you for allowing us to exist. And now let's deep dive into the rabbit hole that is our political circus. I mean, sorry, discourse that's happening around Brett. Kavanaugh, Donald Trump's pick to be the next Supreme Court justice, whose confirmation vote has been delayed because of a new FBI investigation that will take place this week. And now this week, the first major breakthrough allegation and piece of evidence against Kavanaugh is that uh, 33 years ago, he threw ice at somebody. Yeah. And I do have to say, there is something to say specifically about how last week the mainstream media was pushing how there was organized drugging and gang rapes that Kavanaugh was a part of to now throw an ice. And this is what the media has been focusing on, especially the New York Times, since, yeah, this is a very divisive issue that divides many people and only creates people to become more partisan. The mainstream media loves these kinds of stories, and that is kind of exemplified by what's going on with the GoFundMe accounts of both the accuser of Kavanaugh and Kavanaugh himself, with Christine Forbes raising nearly $700,000 and Brett Kavanaugh raising close to a half a million dollars for uh, really what seems to be uh, absolutely no reason at all. And it seems a little bit outrageous to me since Christy Ford, the accuser, already has a house that is worth $3.3 million and has free legal representation while Kavanaugh lives in a house worth $1.2 million, which he still has a mortgage on of almost $800,000. But regardless of the fact, these are well-off people. And to me, this just highlights some of the ridiculousness happening uh, behind all of this political theater. Also, it's important to note that the FBI also interviewed three Kavanaugh witnesses who, again, don't remember any of the details that are alleged by Ford. And the third accuser against Kavanaugh, who says that she actually witnessed him participate in druggings and gang rapes, backtracked on her story on an NBC interview saying that she, quote, I don't know what he did. And that, of course, is just one side of this crazy story. The other side of this crazy story is saying that Kavanaugh lied under oath and that he must be held accountable. And the first claim that this article makes about Kavanaugh allegedly lying was, of course, surrounding the point of him drinking to the point of blacking out, which allegedly some classmates contradict. And looking at this entire situation objectively, it does look like the right-wingers are winning the information war behind this case. And while everyone is bickering about what happened 35 years ago with a frat guy, the left is completely ignoring and not even acknowledging that Brett Kavanaugh is a police state totalitarian puppet and ultimately the exemplification of a Dick Cheney light, who, in my opinion, would be a horrible Supreme Court justice since he has violated the Constitution many times, which the Supreme Court is supposed to interpret and not eradicate like Kavanaugh has been doing with the Patriot Act, normalizing torture, violating human rights, and a right to due process, which he does not believe people have a right to because of U.S. national security interests, even though he himself and his supporters are arguing for due process for him. And that, to me, is a major folly by the left, while the right-wingers are pushing for more war and conflict than ever, which Kavanaugh is a big proponent of and supporter of. And now there's no opposition to it, and the right-wingers are able to do whatever they want, and they're escalating the situation, like we saw just two days ago, where the U.K. and 
and the U.S. are sending troops to the Arctic in order, of course, to saber rattle against Russia. Just today, the U.S. ambassador to NATO threatened Russia that they would destroy their Russian nuclear capable missile systems. Russia's foreign minister, of course, responded by saying, quote, it seems that people who make such statements do not realize the level of their responsibility and the danger of aggressive rhetoric and the development and expansion of the military industrial complex on both sides is only increasing as there now is even speculation that Russia has developed an air launched anti-satellite weapon system and of course all these aggressive actions against each other justify their buildup which is ultimately money being stolen away from the people to develop new capable weapons that could destroy the earth 20, 50, 100 times over. The cycle, of course, perpetrated by the right-wingers, neoconservatives, totalitarians who, who want this and need this for their own diabolical purposes. And that's why we're even seeing more tensions rise between the United States and China. China, of course, being a very close ally to Russia against the United States. And with very aggressive U.S. trade war talks between the U.S. and China, which have honestly escalated towards more military-style threats, as China just canceled the U.S. Security Summit with even the U.S. Secretary of Defense Mathis canceling his trip to China recently as the two nations saber rattle against each other. And just yesterday, a Chinese military destroyer intercepted an American destroyer who was sailing past the Chinese-made military islands in the South Chinese Sea, with China calling their presence a threat, while U.S. officials were furious and say that they will indeed continue to keep sailing past the Chinese military man-made islands, and that it was China and their ship that created an unsafe environment that could have caused a collision between the two destroyers. And the ships did come within 45 yards of each other and you can't really underplay the severity of this incident since it just could even be a mistake that could lead to these two super world powers china and the united states from actually having a real war. Now that costly mistake is unlikely, but it's still a possibility. But even without just that calamity, looking at the economic markets, especially in China and the United States, which are ridden with debt and talks of trade wars between these two world powers, the house that we are all in is more unstable than ever since China and the United States need each other to keep each other financially stable and thriving. And if one of them comes down, the other one will as well. And of course, monetary issues have been the causes of major world wars. And of course, financial issues have been the cause of many wars throughout history. And of course, there's many reasons to keep a close eye on all of these situations, especially with the de-dollarization and major economic moves that of course will hit close to home and are more unstable than ever. And it does need to be understood that the United States' greatest asset is, of course, its military, which they outspend the rest of the world on. And honestly, if you have a hammer, everything else starts looking like a nail towards the problems and circumstances that this country is facing. And that's why there's many proxy wars happening all throughout the world that the United States is involved in, which of course predominantly go against the economic threats of the United States, which is Russia, China and Iran. And that's why we have seen a completely backwards American foreign policy from what it says it is and the continuation and expansion of conflicts in Syria and of course Yemen currently. Which is an issue that the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about, the left doesn't want to talk about, the right doesn't want to talk about. But uh, hey, uh, we're, we're still here. Even though we're getting censored, we just got hacked. Facebook's not even helping us with our Facebook page. But regardless, if you appreciated this message, share this video with your friends and family members. Thank you so much for watching all the way up till this point. Of course, let me know your comments and feedback in the comment section below, which I answer within the first hour that this video is out. And hell, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, so I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more. Whenever there are riots anywhere in the world, Luke is there on the ground. Oh shit, shit. Oh, oh shit. Oh, 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 I'm a fucking journalist, you motherfucker! You immediately disperse. You must leave the immediate vicinity. When politicians need a reality check, he faces them and confronts them head on. Uh, what happens when you worship Moloch at the Bohemian Grove? Well. When there's an injustice in the world, 
we expose it. They also talk about some hippy dippy stuff like mushrooms, DNT, acid, quantum physics, consciousness, and seeking solutions to the problems that we face. We travel the world, question authority, stand up for our rights, and fight back against the elite with the greatest weapon humanity has ever had in history, a video camera. We are fully funded by you and only you. No one else tells us what to do because together, and together we are change. New videos every Sunday through Thursday. Subscribe.